morning. My name is Edwin. My group members are SP and Mingxin. Uh, today, my group will be presenting a phenomenon called social loafing and something called the collective effort model. Uh, so, I'd like to begin with a very simple experiment. Uh, can the guy in the last row. Okay, then I'm on this side. <laughs> okay, what's your name? Justin. <laughs> yeah, I'd like you to help me with a simple experiment first. So, on the count of three, I want you to shout NUS at the top of your voice as loud as you can. Okay, don't be shy. Okay, so three, two, one, go. NUS! Okay. So we registered the, the, the loudness of that voice. Now I like the whole right side of the class to perform the same task on the count of three. So three, two, one, go. <laughs> okay, one more time. Three, two, one, go. Oh, very good. Okay, now let's have the whole class join in. Okay, three, two, one, go. NUS! <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, apart from waking you up, Okay, there's a point to this experiment. So what we just did was uh, try to prove the Ringelmann effect. Okay, that when more people participate in a group in a group task collectively, the average uh, performance of each, each individual decreases. So uh, right hand side did, did this uh, effect very very well. <laughs> okay. Uh, so okay, going more into the Ringelmann effect, uh, what Ringelmann first did was. Uh, he did an experiment consisting of German males. He made each of them pull on a rope and uh, measured how much force uh, was exerted on that rope. So he found out that the average of this uh, group of German males was about 63 kilos per person. So the average. So he then paired them into groups of uh, two, fours, and eights, and he realized that uh, when, once he hit four people, the amount of uh, force exerted on the rope was only about two and a half times the solo rate, which means four people could only do two and a half times of what an individual could do. And when it came to eight, it was less than four times. So as more people are participating in the in the rope pulling, uh, the average strength of each individual uh, each individual was decreasing. So that's the Ringelmann effect. So further research done into the Ringelmann effect uh, could generalize the factors caused that caused the amount of force exerted from collective effort to be decreased into uh, two simple factors: poor coordination and decrease in individual effort. So these experiments show, however, that most for most part of the loss was not contributed by poor coordination, like what happened just now. Even though I tried to mit mitigate the coordination problem by counting down to zero, okay, the amount of sound generated from right side was still very, very poor. So it was due to the decrease in individual effort. So they called the, this decrease in individual effort social loafing. So social loafing is defined by a phenomenon whereby there's a reduction of in, in a motivation and effort when individuals work collectively compared to when they work alone. So the question now is uh, why, what causes social loafing? So social loafing is a uh, cause generalized into three simple factors. So the first one is attribution and equity. Okay, it sounds a bit uh, confusing, but what it actually means is that when an individual, individual feels that there's someone else in the group that is putting in less effort than himself, he will tend to put in less effort as well. Okay, so but uh, this is a loop. So when other individuals do uh, see that individual putting less effort, they will put in less effort as well. And in the end, the overall team performance is uh, minimal. So the second one is sub-maximal goal setting, which is the thought that when several people are working towards a well-defined goal, each individual can work less for it. So. This usually changes the task from maximizing to optimizing, which means uh, everyone in the group starts to say, how do we get to this goal as fast as we can, compared to what's the best we can do? And finally, lesson contingency between input and outcome. So this is also a very big word, but uh, it's actually very simple. It has two meanings. Uh, basically, it means an individual is hiding in the crowd or lost in the crowd. So if you're hiding in the crowd, it means you feel that you can avoid the consequences of not contributing because you're hiding in the crowd and no one will know it's you. And if you're lost in the crowd, it means you feel that when uh, you, you don't want to do put in as much effort because you won't be recognized even if you, you do put in more effort. So that's hiding in the crowd and lost in the crowd. So now we know there's the problem called social loafing. We move on to the collective effort model. So what is the collective effort model? Well, I'll go through later. We'll first start on uh, why we need a model to, uh, for social loafing. So there's been a lot of uh, social research going on. 
uh, social loafing research going on, but very little attention has been do devoted into integrating all this research. So there's very, a lot of individual researchers. <laughs> so most of these theories tend to make explanation and prediction only within a limited domain. So it works in one situation and it doesn't work in another. So you have a theory on social loafing at work and you have a theory on social loafing at school, but the theories cannot work on each, uh, each uh, the, uh, across domains. So CEM is a meta analysis, which basically is a method that combines and contrasts uh, multiple different researchers to identify patterns and uh, generalize them across all domains. Okay, so uh, Carol and William created CEM as a cognitive model, which focuses on an individual's perception of the relationship between the effort they put in and the expected outcomes. So how much, how an individual thinks, how much she put in will cost how much she gets out of it. So it's how you think, so it's cognitive. So it creates expectancy theories, theories of group social level comparison and self-evaluation, because uh, it's meta-analysis, so it's uh, steals from, or rather com combines many researchers. Okay, so what it actually does is determines the factors which influence motivation in a collective context. So if I, from a, by use of the collective effort model, you can determine what uh, influences individual's motivation when he's in a group. So this is the rule that the collective effort model works on. It, state, it suggests that individuals will be willing to exert effort on a collective task only to a degree that they expect their efforts to be valuable in obtaining the desired outcome. So you're only mo as motivated as what you feel will come out of it, of how much effort you put in. So, Okay, we'll take a look at the model, but first, uh, CM, CM was built on the expectancy um, theory. So the expectancy theory already has a model, so we'll go through that first. So expectancy theory says that uh, expectancy plus instrumentality plus valence will determine motivation. So okay, I'll, I'll go through each of these words in a, in a short bit. So this is how, and okay, motivation and then motivation will determine how much indi the individual puts in, how much effort the individual puts in. So this is the expectancy theory. So what it says is that uh, when, an before it, when an individual perceives, before an individual puts in effort, okay, there is expectancy. So expectancy combines individual effort with individual's performance. It means, expectancy means the degree in which uh, an individual perceives high levels of effort will lead to high levels of performance. Okay. Uh, this might be a bit tricky, so I'll give you an example. So, if you're good at something, and you know, then you will think in a certain way, such that you know that if you put in more effort, you will definitely have a better performance. Right? So, if you think that way, then you have a good, good degree of expectancy. However, if you, if you feel that you're really bad at something, and putting in more, more effort won't really change the outcome of the performance, then you have a poor level, a poor degree of expectancy. Okay, so from expectancy, we move on to instrumentality. Instrumentality is the degree in which an individual perceives high levels of performance are instrumental in obtaining uh, the desired outcome. Okay, so whether what you're doing is uh, high levels of performance are actually required to obtain your desired outcome. So the last one is valence or uh, the value of the outcome. So, uh, what this means is the degree to which the outcome is viewed as desirable by an individual. So, given the exam context, is the individual striving for an A or is he fine with a C? Because if he's fine with a C, then if you chain backwards, everything becomes a low de lower degree. Okay, so, so this is expectancy theory. And CEM changes it, expands on it slightly. So now you have three additional factors. Individual performance no longer, um, no longer is uh, related to individual outcome. So now individual performance, the, they, they add the, the red lines. Uh, okay, the red line, the first red line is uh, individual performance to group performance. It's the perceived relationship between individual's performance and group's performance, which means how much it, the individual's performance will actually affect the overall group performance. Group performance and group outcome. So, what levels, how high the level of uh, group 
performance is required to achieve the desired group outcome. And finally, how the group outcome actually affects the individual's outcome. So this is how the collective effort model determines motivation is uh, calculated by each individual and each group. So by use of this model, we can decrease the factors that cause social, uh, we can, sorry, generalize the factors that decrease social loafing to just six. So this is important. So the first one is uh, increasing identifiability. Identifiably, well, which actually means you make the task more identifiable to the person, the individual. So what that means is, uh, for example, you have a task of, uh, of just being supposed to shout. And uh, you know he's supposed to shout loudly, so if the person on this side of the room can't hear him, okay, we know or she knows that it's his fault making him more likely to perform the task, uh, put in more effort to perform the task. So in, the second one is increasing attractiveness of the group. So we know that social loafing, uh, one of the reasons it causes social loafing is that uh, the, the, per the perception that others in the group will put in less effort than yourself. So you mitigate this by increasing the attractiveness of the group. So if you think that everybody in the group will perform better than you, or put in more effort than you, then you are more likely to put in more effort as well. So the third one is uh, increasing the attractiveness of the task. Uh, I think it's straightforward. If you like something, you go the extra mile. Uh, increasing the uniqueness of the effort, which means if uh, you are the only person tasked to do it, or only person capable of doing it, it's a unique task, then you are more likely to put in more effort while doing it. Uh, smaller group size, because uh, when you have a big group size, identifiability and uniqueness of the task will be decreased. And finally, or and most interestingly, there is uh, the expectation that others will perform poorly. So by having the expectation that others in the group will perform poorly, it actually decreases social loafing because then individuals feel the need to make up for, the, for their counterparts. So a simple example is a group with a mix of experts and amateurs and a group full of experts. The experts within the, the group with amateurs are more likely to perform, uh, put in more effort because they feel the need to put in, uh, to make up for the loss they feel exists within the amateurs in the group. So they, the amateurs are, may not necessarily be lousy, but the perception of the experts of them is that they will perform poorly. So they themselves put in more effort compared to in a group where everyone is expert. So everybody already knows each, of, each other can perform well. So this expectation decreases social loafing as well. So I'll now hand over to Ming Shin, who will cover how any of this has anything to do with HCI. Okay, so what does social learning have to do with HCI? It's, in HCI, most of our applications are non-multi-user, right? Okay. As in most of our applications are just single-user uh, and stuff. So social learning deals with a very specific subset of HCI design, mainly those that involve communities and groups. The subset of uh, HCI known as Computer Supported Cooperative Work, uh, CSCW, uh, works to solve real world pro problems. They are too complex for individuals, so they have to use groups. So they build tools to improve cooperative work and try to achieve the goal that distributed teams can work together as though they were co-located. This has serious implications because um, when when communication is mediated by a computer, the effectiveness of a group decreases because you don't feel the, the group bonding anymore, right? So social loafing is ever present. On a larger scale, communities and groups are those like forums, bulletin boards, mm, games, and such. And it's greatly affected by the, the presence of social loafing. What loafers do is that they do not follow discussions and content, and they do not contribute to the community. I mean, they follow discussions and content, but they do not contribute to the community. And about 90% of most, on average, about 90% of these groups consist of social locals, which is, an, which is a very big number. Right, for example, let's do a poll right here. How many of you use Wikipedia? Okay, actually, how many of you do not use Wikipedia? <laughs> oh, okay. How many of you have contributed to Wikipedia before? One, two, three. Okay, you see three. About 30 of us, three 
ten percent, ninety percent. Okay, well, about there, the number. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we go on to explain how does uh, social loafing and CEM link to our design principles that we can use in our projects in HDI. We discussed several points just now. Uh, Edwin discussed several points just now, about six of them. One of them was the attractiveness of the task. And he explained that it increases the value of the outcome of the individuals and hence decreases social loafing. So how do we increase the attractiveness of our task? We can define the topic sharply and increase interactivity. What does this mean? When you sharply define a topic, for example, when you take a forum, compare a forum whose theme is um, soap operas with a forum whose theme is a specific drama, which is maybe Friends. The forum that has a theme of Friends is probably uh, more active, I would say, because the people that join these forums specifically join the forums to discuss about this specific uh, show, right? Compared to the forum where in, it's a general forum where all soap operas, users are just likely to browse through and not contribute. And interactivity, when it's more interactive, it's just more attractive. It's human psychology. Okay, next is the attractiveness of the group. When a group is more attractive, the value of your own outcomes will increase. I mean, if the group will increase and hence your own outcomes will increase. Right? So how do we increase the attraction of the group? Same as before, we define a topic sharply. And next, we can try to recruit members which have prior relationship. Because if you have uh, members who are connected already before they join the, the group or community, they are more likely to contribute with, to each other because they know each other. For example, in, uh, in games nowadays, you often find that um, there are always perks for you to introduce your friends to the games or recruit your friends to these games. And for forums and discussion boards, some, most of them now are locked and, only, and are only uh, open through invitation. Right? So the third point we have is group size. This is uh, very straightforward. To decrease, I mean, to decrease social loafing, you decrease group size. So you restrict the size, or you split up current groups if they're getting too big. For example, if a bulletin board about cars is getting, um, they have too many members. What you do, you split the the forum into more subsets, like maybe continental cars, Japanese cars, and stuff. Right. The fourth point is the uniqueness of effort. We increase the value of uh, one's effort if the uniqueness of effort uh, increases. So what, what does this mean? It means that we must try to implement unique roles in our design. For example, in health um, discussion boards, they often bring in uh, doctors, nurses, and even patients to discuss because everyone has their own unique way of explaining and their own unique experiences that allow us to, to learn from different people. And they are more likely to contribute because they know that their experiences are unique. So, you will have noticed that I've only got through four out of six of these points. This is because the others were in your, in your wrist, so you better ignore it. So, wrapping up. Social psychology provides a huge body of research for us to tap, to tap on. But it's really taken advantage of. Why? Because there's a mismatch in goals of HCI research and social psychology research. For example, I discussed the attractiveness principle and the uniqueness principle just now. And attractiveness, one of the important things that <coughs> increase attractiveness is the similarity between groups. And when you compare similarity and uniqueness, they are, at, they are contradictory, right? Why? Because um, in HCI, we are problem-solving domain. We solve problems based on context. Whereas in social psychological research, they tend to try to find the general solution to all the problems in that domain. So, we, there is insufficient guidance from their research to, for us to rely on. And hence, we often have to improvise while using their research and, and design. So hence, we conclude our presentation of social loafing and hope you guys enjoy.
That's a simple